The sounds of the party downstairs were muffled as I stood guard outside the bathroom door, and I found my chest heaving up and down, thanks to how nervous I was. I figured she might be a while, and I did hope that I hadn't scared her off when I told her I wanted to talk to her, but I was getting more and more nervous by the second. What if she had decided she didn't want to be here any longer and wanted to escape? What if she was calling for help? Before too long, I heard the muffled sound of the toilet flushing in the bathroom, followed by the sound of the faucet running as she washed her hands. Just when I was starting to feel uncomfortable standing there, waiting for her to finish, she finally opened up the door. Seeing me standing guard, waiting for her to get out, she gave me a gentle smile and brushed some loose hair from her face. Thanks for letting me use your bathroom, she said, sounding genuinely grateful as she spoke. I didn't really get a chance to do anything before getting off work and coming here. Waving a hand dismissively at her, I motioned down the hallway, away from the stairs. Can I talk to you for a moment, please? I asked, trying to remain as formal and polite as possible, away from everyone. She winced, seeming a bit nervous as she stared at me for a moment. But after a minute, she nodded her head in response. Of course, she agreed as she followed me down the hallway into my room, which was meant to be strictly off-limits to all visitors during the playgroup parties, in order to prevent people from coming in and corrupting littles. As soon as we entered the room, I closed and locked the door, not wanting anyone to distract us while we were talking. Every hair on the back of my neck was standing on end, and I felt the sweat forming on my brow as I prepared to talk to Laura. When I finally turned to look at her, she was already sitting down on the bed. So, what did you want to talk about? Laura asked as she sat there. Is something wrong? Taking a deep breath, I returned her smile. Not at all, I reassured her. I just wanted to ask you if you had found a daddy yet. Immediately, her smile fell, and she looked down at the ground. No, she admitted. I haven't. No one seems to like me that way. Frowning, I shook my head at her. That's not true, I reassured her as I sat down on the bed next to her. I know, because I like you like that. Not seeming convinced, she raised an eyebrow at me as she stared at me in disbelief for a moment. Really? she asked, and I nodded in response. Does this mean you'll be my daddy? With a shrug, I nodded my head. I'd love to be your daddy, I told her. However, I do have a small request for you. Tilting her head to the side, she stared at me curiously. What's that? she asked, and I took a deep breath. I want you to stay with me for the next week and show me what kind of little you truly are, I informed her and her jaw dropped in surprise as she stared at me. What do you mean? she asked, and I continued. Too many littles have been misbehaving over the last year, I explained. So, to prove whether or not you're a little, I want to see how you would act as my little. You would only have to do it for a full week before I decide whether or not you're a proper little or not. It also gives me a chance to correct any problematic behavior before we make things official. She stared at me in shock and disbelief for a moment, and I was certain she was going to turn me down. However, after a brief silence, she sighed and nodded her head in response. All right, she agreed. I'll agree to your test. 